Let me pose the problem for today. Can we continue to use Google services like YouTube and still retain some semblance of privacy? In other words, can we beat Google at its tracking and spying game? Or is this impossible? The answer is that it is possible. In fact, I'm doing it right now and here I am on YouTube. Admittedly, this is not a simple task. It requires people to make changes to how they use technology. But yes, it can be done. This is a tutorial targeted to the user that is not an advanced techie, but is looking for some simple ways to minimize the privacy threat. And I will try to explain things in a way to allow a compromise. This approach is not about privacy perfection. Some people may like to make moves that are more gradual, and I will try to suggest that if it is possible. So stay right there if you want to learn how to still utilize Google in some way while not allowing Google to abuse your privacy. I'm on the platform odyssey.com. I'm now a top creator on there. In case I get the platform, please follow me there using the link in the description. My company sells privacy products like Bytes VPN, a metadata free email, Brax Mail, and our new product is the Brax 2 privacy phone that can shield you from Google and others. Brax 2 is now available on Amazon and also on my app Brax Me. The links are in the description. To summarize the Google tracking in a nutshell, every Google service tracks you very easily using the most basic of all identifiers and that is the Google ID. It seems very obvious. Unfortunately, it is very hard to utilize a lot of Google services without succumbing to the use of the Google ID. In the early stages when Google first acquired YouTube, there were still separate logins to various Google services. In fact, I don't recall a Google login being needed for Google search. Then Google implemented the universal login we see today. All Google services are tied to the same Google ID. And in case we forget, I will remind you that the Google ID is actually a Gmail account. Now, when you log into any Google platform like YouTube, even Chrome is also logged in. So basically, every function you do on a Chrome browser is known to Google. This includes search, Gmail, every internet click, every website, every action on YouTube, every action on Google Photos, Google Drive, Google Docs, and so on. On your mobile device, it is much the same story. If you're using a Google Android, then you log into the phone so it keeps track of your Google Play apps. But on top of that, it really is able to know the specific device you are on. This allows Google to use your device as a two-factor authentication tool since it can verify your device using the device identifiers that it can read, identities like the IMEI of the phone. The Google ID is likewise known on iPhones since the moment you use a Google app, it is clear who you are and that is shared with all Google apps on the same device. Those same Google apps can verify the device identity as well. And once again, Google knows exactly who owns your mobile device. Now, phones have an additional specific danger since location privacy is impossible with Apple iPhones and Google Androids. So on top of knowing what you do, your every location is known and attached to your Google ID, especially on Androids. So clearly, the privacy culprit with Google services and platforms is the Google ID. A little bit of common sense will make some of this clear. The Google ID is your Gmail, so Google can obviously read all the email that you send or receive. I hope this is painfully obvious because Google doesn't provide these services for free from the goodness of their heart. Google gets something from your use of its services. Google finds information about you. So this is the bargain you make. Google gets to track you. In exchange, you can use their services for free. Free is great, you think. You don't think there's a cost. And of course, there is a clear and present danger to privacy, but most people deny that that is a concern. 
But what if you can use Google services for free like usual and you find a way to blunt their ability to track you? They can still track you in some way, but can we lessen the privacy loss risk? Can we use Google services safely? The answer is yes to some services, but not all. Mostly, I think YouTube can possibly be used in a lot safer way. Apps like Google Earth may not hurt us too badly either, especially if you can prevent your location from being recorded. Gmail can be used in a very bad way, but it can also be used in a safe way. Google search can be problematic, but there may be a way around this as well with alternate search engines. There are Google services that I wouldn't really care to use at all. For example, Google Photos, Google Drive, and Google Docs are big no-nos in my book. I don't see how this can be used safely. These are just so invasive that there may not be a way out of the loss of privacy. I'll get into how some of the other Google services can be used a bit later. So the privacy culprit is clearly the Google ID. If the Google ID is known, then what you do on Google is known. How do we get around that? The answer is that not everything you do needs to utilize a Google ID. I'll start with using YouTube as an example. As of the time this video was created, close to 364,000 of you are subscribed to me on YouTube. That means that these subscribers are logged into Google. It's almost oxymoronic that 364,000 of you are subscribed to a privacy channel on YouTube. And please, I do not wish for you to unsubscribe. Your subscription truly helps this channel. So please stay subscribed. And this channel is not a political channel, so I don't believe being a subscriber to my channel can profile you politically, which is currently one of the biggest threats. The main problem is that Google knows everything you do on YouTube. But what if you only let Google know what you want it to know? What if you get to decide what you want Google to see about you? One of the more privacy invading capabilities of Google is how it tracks people's political beliefs and preferences. So I'm going to suggest something simple here. Why not use two browsers for Google and YouTube? In my case, my main channel activities are on Chrome. I'm logged into Chrome, so my Google ID should be quite apparent. It is also very clear to me that whatever I do on Chrome is known very well to Google. Does it really hurt my privacy if I look at cat videos or dog videos? What actual information is known that can hurt me if I subscribe to PewDiePie or MrBeast? What actual damage will happen to me if I watch YouTube videos of recipes of Thai food from Marion's Kitchen? How about when I watch sailing channels like SV Delos. Google knows I watch these channels because I subscribe to them. I've decided that these channels are benign and have no privacy cost. However, if I click on a video on guns or Fox News or CNN or some politician or opinion piece, I know I'm being profiled. If I click on some vaccination video, I will be profiled. If I click on videos that take some side on any controversial issue, then that side will be profiled. So what happens if I use a different browser when I need to search these on the internet or use YouTube? This is in fact what I do. I use a second browser, which in my case is Brave. And I use this browser for anything that might involve Google. It also helps to sometimes use Tor or a VPN when I use this browser. But on this browser, I never, never, never log into Google. So this browser is never exposed to a Google ID. Google will be unable to collect information on this second browser because without a Google ID, there is no permanent identifier it can assign the actions to. Google will still try to match search activities and YouTube activities via the IP address, which is all they will be able to utilize. However, Google prefers a long-term identifier and it will use identifiers like an IP address only for the short term. And as I even suggested, using Tor or a VPN on the second browser will solve that. Google will not be able to collect the information and assign it as belonging to a specific person. In other words, you will cause Google profiling to fail. 
What I'm saying here is for each of us to understand where big tech can hurt us. It just takes some common sense. We do not need to waste time keeping all information from Google. We just need to exclude certain pieces of information that Google can use to judge us in some way. I'm sure there would be little to hurt you if Google knew you liked cat videos or Mr. Beast or you recently searched for how to unclog your shower drain. Who cares, right? So I'm not trying to give you impossible objectives to preserve your privacy. All I'm saying is that you should be aware of what you do and just learn to partition your activity since you know someone is watching. I hate to think that someone is watching, but that's the reality. I accept it and I came up with a strategy to fight back. Searches on YouTube and Google search can be used against you if you're not thinking this out. You might ask how a Google can hurt you if it knows your politics, your beliefs, your values. Well, Google actively controls the search results and messaging that reaches you based on whatever its political agenda is. This is a documented fact which I discuss in several older videos. So being cavalier about having your information collected and misused is tantamount to giving up your freedoms. If Google doesn't know what we're thinking, it will be very hard to manipulate us or try to get us to change opinion to whatever side they want to promote. Otherwise, you are giving them the power to manipulate us as a group. This is a very simple approach. Isolate your politics, religion, medical queries, etc. Anything controversial, anything that you want to keep private. Isolate by using a different browser that never sees a Google login. Otherwise, continue life, YouTube, and other internet activities in the same way. Now, if you're doing these controversial activities on other platforms like Twitter, Zuckbook, Instagram, and so on, then you must understand that Google can also see that if you use the same browser. So I want to emphasize this. Do not go to any other site on your browser assigned to Google with a Google ID, which in my case is Chrome. Do not do your politics on Twitter on Chrome. Use a different browser for that. Again, another browser that will never see a Google platform or a Google ID. In my case, I have a third browser, which is Chromium for that purpose. You also can use other browsers like Safari, Firefox, or Waterfox for this. Of course, I've talked about this in other videos, but here we are making sure you understand clearly that all we're doing is to prevent the Google ID from being recorded on the other browsers. The result of this will be to blunt Google's ability to collect important information where there is no Google ID. Is what I explained here hard to do? Are you making a very serious sacrifice to your use of the internet? I'll add a few things to this concept I'm explaining that will really improve your chances of retaining privacy. First is to understand that the Google ID is tied to platforms that can supply additional information about what you think and what you believe. This is what you must stop Google from collecting. The main issue, for example, is Gmail. The solution? Use a completely different Gmail account for YouTube one that is not actually used to receive real email. This way, the Google ID or Gmail account does not have anything interesting that can be collected. If you set up a new Gmail account for YouTube use, then Google collects nothing from Gmail. If you do not post pictures in Google Photos on that Gmail account, or you don't use Google Drive and Google Docs on that Gmail account, then this Google ID will be on profile. Now, my recommendation is to never use Gmail for any serious email conversations beyond junk mail. I would suggest you use a paid email service instead. I would also tell you to drop the use of Google Drive and Google Photos and use something else. Keeping your data separated in different platforms prevent profiling. It's particularly dangerous since Google reads your email, looks at your Google Photos, and reads your Google Docs. So just between these three items, it has a good sense of what you do and what you're thinking. If you use Google Search, you might want to switch to some other search engine. For example, you can use StartPage, which is a Google Search proxy. It uses Google data 
but does not attach your search to a Google ID. Let me switch gears for a moment by talking about your mobile phone. This unfortunately is where the tracking can continue. The reason is that a Google Android or iPhone can detect what you do on the phone and these devices are almost always logged into a Google ID at the device level. What I mean is that it is almost impossible to separate your Google ID from what you do on a mobile phone. The practical solution to exclude this worry is to switch to a de-Google phone like a Brax 2 or any of the available de-Googled Android open source phone options out there. In the absence of the solution, then I would really highly recommend that you be cognizant about what you do on the phone that you know is being watched. No need to fear that you are watching Mr. Beast, PewDiePie, cat videos, cooking channels, plumbing videos, or sports. No need to fear what you watch on Netflix or Prime Video. But if you're going to search about politics and you do not have a de Google phone, why not wait to do that on a computer on a browser that has never logged into Google? By the way, you may also want to counter the Google profiling by doing the opposite search on YouTube or Google search. Do things that are opposite of what you think. This is a little more advanced approach, but it may be useful for confusing the AI. It will make you more unpredictable, which is a big win in my book. What I'm teaching you here today is not very complicated. It just requires an awareness that someone is watching and an awareness of what you should let that someone see. Let me repeat this. Someone is watching. As long as you know that, make them see what you want them to see. Hide the rest. Keep it private. Thank you for watching and see you next time.